Welcome back to my channel. First of all, thank you to all of you that have subscribed to this channel. I've now reached 2000 subscribers and I can only describe that as fun. So thank you to all of you that are subscribed. And if you aren't, please do if you feel like it. I guess that's it. I thought I'd celebrate my 2000 milestone with a live stream of some sorts, but I'll come back to that later. I doubt that it will be before the summer hits, but we'll just see. In today's video, I thought I'd speak a little bit about tropes and the reason is quite bizarre. And that is that I never think about tropes when I read stories. I just think of the stories, but I, I guess I, I know that a lot of people like to think about their favorite tropes and like base their reading around it, but I haven't done that yet. So I thought I'd do this video to try to discover what are my favorite tropes and what do I think about different tropes. So the only book I really like clicked for me is The Count of Monte Cristo, because I discovered that I really love the rags to riches and the revenge aspect of stories. And I guess those are two tropes that are popular and that's, mainly the story that I like think about when I think about tropes. And I guess when reading classic literature, I also think about the tropes because they're classic, they're, they're famous tropes, I guess, and we all know them. So it's easy to think about them. I tried Googling tropes and I found this site that split this into three categories. So I thought I'd do this in the category literary and then young adult, because I do read some young adult books and then historical fiction. I feel like those three categories are the ones that fit me the most and we'll discuss them. I'd love to you, I'd love for you to discuss these in the comments with me. So here we go. So the first category literary, it's flowery writing matters more than plot. And if this is a trope, Maybe this is the reason why I don't think about tropes that much because it doesn't really m give meaning to me that the writing in itself could be a trope. But I, I do like plot a lot more than writing itself. So I guess that one answers itself. Then we have childhood memories dealing with childhood trauma. It's common in literary fiction. I don't think it has to be traumatizing for me to enjoy it, but I do feel like a lot of authors go that route, no matter if it's fiction or nonfiction, I guess. I like memoirs based on childhood or when people describe their childhood and what they went through, but only if it's it has a happy ending. So it's not a childhood, but Patti Smith and Just Kids, she's a young adult, I guess, but it turns out great. And without that, what would I have? Sorrow, I guess. Set in a small town. I feel like this is relatable for me. I, I grew up in a small town, so small town stuff I could enjoy. One of my favorite TV series is Twin Peaks. And I guess that's because it's based in a small town also because it's cray cray, but I, I feel like it helps. Major characters killed off. I feel like some books, it's meant for someone to die. So books where one has a disease and you're sort of waiting for that person to die. I can sometimes become a little bit upset if they don't. I also read A Court of Mist and Fury the other day by Sarah J Maas. And I was disappointed that not more people died. So people don't have to die, but I sometimes get disappointed. Then we have meandering plot. Once again, plot isn't a major concern. Many of these books end ambiguously or abruptly. And I guess this is the worst thing I know in many books when it's no clear goal or just suddenly it's over without any closure at all. I've read a lot of these books over the years now and they're all equally terrible. Then it's time for the young adult category. I feel like this is a category or it is a category where it's more easy to predict if you like a story or not. You often know more what you're going to get and it's often a bit more simplified, which sometimes helps. So the first one is The Outsider. If I want a story with a good outsider, I, I want him to either win massively or lose massively. I don't want him to be an outsider that like helps other people. I want him to be the main character, just surprisingly the main character. So he like 
I want the author to trick me into thinking that it's not important and then he comes back. If that, it's a, sort of a reveal of the outsider type of thing. That's something I could enjoy. Then we have the first love. Romance in general isn't something I like seek out. I guess if I want a romance novel, I want something to be, I more want the romance stuff to be surprising again. I don't want it to be like, oh, I'm in love for the first time. This is magical and I'm disappointed. And then we're happy towards the end. It's yeah, boring. The next one is love is the answer. It doesn't matter what the question is. No, a hard no. Incapable of love, the character who has been hurt so badly they've given up on love. Still a hard no for me. It's never, I've never seen a story where the incapable of love stuff is believable. I, I never, it never gets to me, I guess. I think this is at least not something I look for in books. Over to useless and evil adults. And then yet again, I, I do like evil adults if they are truly evil or portrayed as funny evil. So if it's a YA, if it's a YA novel and the main character hates her or his parents, I could enjoy that. But often if it's exaggerated or if they are evil, I, I could do both. But it has to be done with force. So the chosen one, I guess everyone that has grown up with Harry Potter likes this. I love The Chosen One. If it's an underdog story in general, I do like it. I do not like. I guess this is not something that happens all that often if you have a story where it is a chosen one, but The Chosen One is sort of great from before. He has to be a, like useless in the beginning and then become The Chosen One at some point. Over to Dark Family Secret. This is also something I could enjoy. I I do like books where in general there is a secret that is evolving without let, letting go of what is, what is it exactly. This is also something that could disappoint massively if you read a book, there's a big secret and then halfway in the book it's revealed and it's just meh and then it's like you have the half, rest of the half left and you don't know what to do with the information about the big secret that wasn't all that big. So secrets are difficult to, secrets are difficult to work with, I guess. Like the Wednesday Club by Kjell Vesto, you have this secret or you, you'd feel that there's a secret thing going on and at some point you, you, it's revealed and it's very fulfilling. So it could be done in a good way. Discovering special powers. I do think that, especially when you're younger, you want to discover that you have a superpower. So reading about others that like suddenly discovers a hidden talent, I guess that could be fun. And it depends what these special powers are being used for. And now for the missing or absent parents. Don't know what I feel about that. I don't have any strong opinions, I guess. Then over to historical fiction. This is a category I have enjoyed in the past. And the first one is war, often said during World War II. This is both a yay and nay. I, I do like Second World War I do like Second World War stuff, but that's not because of the war. It's more all the things happening around the war and the implications of it. Not like I hate reading about battlefields and battles, but reading about what happens in the countries where there's not war or happening in countries where there are sent soldiers, that stuff could be interesting. And I have read a lot of books around Second World War. It's a popular theme, but the things like from the front, I read, I read last year a book about the First World War, which I can't remember the name of. I'll sh I'm sure I can show you a picture of it. I enjoyed that massively, but that's just because it's the First World War and descriptions of that war is a lot less common than the Second World War. So that was interesting for that reason. I feel like I know everything about the Second World War in some sense. Probably don't. Set in colonial America, no interest. 
combining real and fictional events. I, I struggle with this. I can never wrap my head around this thing where it's half fiction, half real stuff. When we cease to understand the world by Benjamin Labatut, uh, was about scientists, real world and fiction. But this story was so great in building these two things together and like descending into madness. And it was clear that at some point it just lost its reality feeling or whatever I should call it. So I liked it for that reason, but in general, this is not something I like. Including historical figures as characters. No, thank you. Religious themes, a super no thank you to that one. Social and political turmoil I could very much enjoy. I've read John Steinbeck and I, uh, Grapes of Wrath is a book I really enjoyed. Much of the reason behind it is the description of how America at that time affected the people and what they had to do in those kinds of situations they were put in. So this is something I could enjoy and probably could enjoy reading more of. Dual timeline, one in the past, one in the present. This could also work. I've read books where this is a good thing and a bad thing. I do like it when these, when two timeline meets. So I like that more than timelines set in the past and in the future or set in the present or past, but it could all work. The, the book I think of when I think about this is The History of Bees by Maya Lunde, where it's three separate timelines set in the past, future and present. And I do really like that book. So it, it can work. Then it's traveling long distances, like moving to the West Coast during the 18th century. That specifically, no, but I don't mind traveling long, long distances. Are there people out there that prefer reading books about long distance travel? Weird thing. Then it's what was life like? And I do really enjoy my memoirs and people telling stories about how they, they lived life back in the day, but people writing stories from a period they sell themselves like, or people writing stories about a time they haven't lived in. I, I don't necessarily need it. I don't get why people are hung up on a specific period and need to put all of their books in that category. It doesn't make sense to me. Like write whatever you want, but does it have to be set in the 80s or 1800s? It doesn't really matter to me. And this is something I don't feel like affects me. I don't particularly seek this out either. So there's there's nothing. So I, I guess, did I learn something from this? I am not sure. Maybe that I do like characters that goes from rags to riches, but in different mindsets or different categories or whatever I should call it. It's like when people succeed with something, I do really like that. I'm not going to psychoanalyze myself right now, but it's saying something, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So what is your favorite trope? Do you have a favorite that you like? If you go into a bookstore, do you have a trope in mind? I think what this is something I would like to read about. Please come below and please come below if you have a trope you think I might enjoy. That could be interesting to see. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And remember to give me advice on my live stream. If you have suggestions for what I should do in a live stream, please come below. And I guess that's it. Bye.